This is Carl at National RV Detroit. I'm going to walk you through this 2023 uh, Sunset Trail model number 253RB. Okay, so I'm just going to show you some of the features and and how they work. Okay, so we're in the door side rear of the trailer here, and you have an outside kitchen. Okay, so that consists of a refrigerator, of course, and then you have a griddle, an LP griddle, like so. Now you have to plug this in, the LP in, so you got to get a hold of the line here. Excuse my camera work here for one second. Okay, so you have your quick connect mail here. Then you'll go right underneath right here. You can see there's a quick connect female. And you're going to plug it right into there. And then you'll have uh, gas to your griddle. Okay? So let me put this back in here. It's kind of hard to do with one hand, but let's see what happens here. Okay? All right. Now you have uh, also have running water. Um, so you have power stabilizer jacks, right? Each um, switch, like the rear switch controls both rear jacks and then the front switch controls both front jacks. Now, as I walk up here to the front compartment, I'll show you this crank here. The, the thing is the the stabilizers can be cranked manually if you need to. When, you, when we go over to the off-door side, I'll show you, there's going to be a, 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 a shaft with a pin through it. And this crank right here has a cylinder with a slot cut in it. So that'll fit right over the shaft with the pin through it. You can crank it manually. Let me show you that real quick. Okay, let's go to the rear. It's easier to see. Okay, so you can see right there, you have the uh, shaft with a pin through it. Like I said, that crank will fit right on there. So you can, you can crank it manually to get yourself out of trouble. Also, there's another crank up there. It's a smaller one. And I'll show you that real quick. This one right here. Let me get some light in here, I'm sorry. Um... The small one right here, so this one goes to the to the power tongue jack. So you have a power tongue jack, obviously, up and down, and then you have a hitch light here. If this was to ever fail for ever, whatever reason and you can't get hitched or unhitched, you can pull this rubber plug off and put the crank right on there, and you can crank that manually too if you need to in an emergency. So you get yourself out of trouble um, when it comes to the stabilizers or the um, power tongue jack, okay? So you have a power awning with an LED strip, outside speakers of course. Uh, this is TV signal out plus power so you could put a, a TV out here if you, if you chose to. This right here is your water heater. Okay so right now this water heater is empty. You can see the cap here and then of course it's, you can see it's empty. So this is empty and it's bypassed right now because this trailer is winterized. So. Um, keep in mind that um, this runs on either gas or electric so when camping season comes around and you're you dewinterize the trailer make sure you uh, put the, the bypass valves which are in the back of the water heater make sure you put them in the correct camping position put your cap on the drain and then fill up the water heater tank the tank is actually right behind here but you fill it up and um, then you turn on the whatever energy source you're going to use. If you don't and you use the electric heating element, it can burn out very quickly. So you always want to make sure there's water in there before you start using it. Okay. Let's see what else we got here. That's, that's the furnace vent there. Of course, your um, stairs fold into the trailer and you can adjust the legs by pulling this pin out here on each leg. Okay. There's the front stabilizer switch for both front stabilizers. 
Okay, so you have uh, two LP tanks with an automatic changeover regulator. You have a deep cycle marine battery. And this is the kill switch for the battery right here. So if you want to shut it off, you can shut it off right there. Okay, so we come to the other side of the pass through storage. And uh, you can see that's your dump hose there. Um, you get a reducer to reduce your shore core down to a 20 amp plug if you need to. This is a sprayer with a quick connect here. So um, there's probably, well, we'll, sh we'll show you when we come to the, to the port for this anyway. This is telling us it's pre-wired for a solar panel if you're interested. Okay. These are your, your water hookups. So you have city water right here. City water is the most common way to get water to the trailer. You're just going to hook up the hose, turn it on, and you're all set. Now if you're camping someplace that doesn't have city water, um, you can pre-fill your fresh water tank right here. And then you can um, use the onboard pump to pump the water. All the plumbing will work as though you have city water. You'll just be pumping it from the tank. So I'll show you where the switch is for the water pump inside. But that's where you'd fill it right there. Now this, this is a black tank flush here. So after you dump your black tank, um, let's find it here. It's going to be back here. After you dump your black tank, you can leave the valve open. I can stay on that sticker right next to it. Make sure you leave the valve open. Then you can put the hose of the dump station on here, turn it on. It'll spray out the inside of your black tank and it'll, it'll clean off the sensor so you get a good accurate reading, that sort of thing. So it's a really good thing. If you've got a working hose at the dump station, you know, that hasn't been run over or whatever, <laughs> make sure that uh, you do that, okay? Also, for your freshwater tank, there's the drain for it is right down here. It's, it's that white gate valve right there. So that's where you would um, dump your fresh water tank if, uh, so you don't have to lug the water back home, for example. Okay, your slide room is in right now. You see you've got a 30-foot, 30 30-amp 30 power cord. Um, and I showed you you had that little reducer to reduce it down so you could plug it in at home if you need to when you're packing up. All right. So you have a... Um, a ladder on the back which is a great thing because the manufacturer states that you should inspect your roof every 60 days so make sure you send somebody up there or go up there yourself and look around look at all the sealant make sure there's no cracking no separation any way that water could get in you're going to look at the roofing attachments and roofing material make sure they weren't damaged by uh, low branches or by road debris flying up there whatever just give it a good inspection now, odds are you won't have to do anything for a long time but that's why you're inspecting it, just to stay ahead of things. You're just protecting your investment. So that should be part of your regular maintenance schedule, okay? And of course, you can see up there, there's a housing. That's for a, uh, a Furion backup camera. Uh, you, can, you can purchase one of those if you choose, and it's very simple to install. It'll, you can see when you're backing up. Plus, you can, if you want to leave it on, you can see when you're driving down the road even. So, okay? Um, this would be this, where your sprayer goes. I showed you the sprayer up there. Now this is probably locked here, yes. Yeah, so, but this is, all this is is your, your um, hookups for a campground cable, uh, satellite, whatever you have. And there's also a digital signal booster here. You'll see there's, a, I think, a blue light in there lit up, an LED. But that's where you would hook the, the, uh, the cable or satellite to. Okay, so let's go inside and see what we got here. Start with some lights. Let's see. Let me look right here real quick. Okay. So, um, this switch here is your power awning switch. Never leave the power awning out unattended. Always roll it in when you're not going to be at the campsite. Your slide room is right here. You can see. Take your finger off the button when it when it gets all the way out. You can just pack the slide out. Right there. So it actually drops into place as you saw, so it's level with the floor. Okay. 
Um, while we're at the control panel here, we'll look at that a little bit more. Um, your water pump, I told you I'd show you where the water pump switch is. It's right here. So you use that to pump water out of the fresh water tank. You also use that to winterize the trailer. So um, keep that in mind. You can light your water here on gas right here or the electric heating element right there. Like I said, make sure there's water in the tank before you turn that on. That's important. Uh, you have tank heaters on this one, so you have heating pads on the, all your holding tanks, so you can turn that on and it, it'll extend your camping season. It'll keep them from freezing up. Okay, and then of course then you have your levels here. Your battery's charged, fresh water's empty, black is uh, still being prepped, so it's, um, it's got to be dumped out. Black tube is, is not relevant because you only have one black tank in here, and then gray, of course. Alrighty, um, so once you, you know, it graduates up in one third increments. Once you get past two thirds, you got to start thinking about dumping the gray in the black tank, of course. Okay, now this is your TV, it has a swing out bracket, of course, and there's a, re a remote to it. But keep in mind, this is more than just a, uh, a TV. This particular one has FM radio, right? It has Bluetooth, so you can stream. Uh, you know from your phone or your tablet it has um, an HDMI HDMI plugs in the back so you can actually uh, if you wanted to put a you know like a portable blu-ray player you could plug it right in there for example um, it also has two speaker zones one is inside the trailer two is outside the trailer so it does a lot it's more than just a regular TV okay your refrigerator is a 12 volt DC refrigerator so it works it has a compressor but it's 12 volt very simple, you have on and off. Hold the button for a couple seconds to, to get it to react. You, you don't just poke it real quick. It takes a, a short time to, to respond. And then you have your temperature up and down here. And then you have different modes for, for saving energy, energy saving modes like night mode and that. So you can actually set it uh, and save energy at, at uh, like during the night, for example. Okay, but it's, it's nice size, it's got a good size refrigerator good size freezer so there we go now I don't know if he's got the gas on here so I might have to just talk you through this let me see here let me listen now it's off um, let me go just turn it on That'll make it simple So we'll turn the gas on. Okay. Back inside. Okay. So it might take a. It depends on whether the gas is still in the line because I did open it up. So we'll it might, it might take a few tries. But once once the You've been running it, and you've got a, all the air is out of the line, and that sort of thing. It'll it'll light every single time. So this this is um this is your sparker right here. You turn this clockwise to spark it. Then you have three knobs, of course, for three burners, and then this one is the oven, and then this one is a light. That's all. Okay. So let's see if we can get going here. There you go. That's simple. The oven's a little bit different. The oven has a pilot light. Uh, Pilot light is all the way at the back on the bottom. Maybe we can see the sparker. Yeah, so you can see it sparking back there. That's where the pilot light is. So what you do is you go to the oven knob, you go to the picture of the flame, then you depress it, you keep it depressed, right? You spark it with your left hand um, until you see it light down here. Once you see the pilot light light, you still hold this in for another 10 or 15 seconds to heat up the thermocouple. Then you go to operating temperature and it cycles as an oven does. When you shut it off, the flame goes out obviously, but so does the pilot light. So you have to relight the pilot light each time you use the oven. Okay. Always travel with this closed. Um, you have a, 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 a fan and a light here. Uh, your microwave works like any other microwave. Uh, this, this packet here has all your literature in there. Your remote's probably in there also. 
Okay. So this device here is the power converter. This converts AC to DC power. Um, so first of all, you can see it auto detects the type of battery you have. You have a regular lead acid battery, a deep cycle marine battery to be more precise in here. Um, also, uh, well, let's do it this way. This, this, this side is 110 AC and you have regular circuit breakers like you see at home and they're all labeled right there. Right? Then the power is converted to 12 volt DC. On this side, you got 12 volt fuses and they're all labeled. Okay, so that's 12 volt. So it converts the AC to DC power. Um, if any of these blow, you can see it, you can see them glowing through this tilt, tinted plastic here. But importantly, this as long as you're plugged into shore power, this is a battery tender also. So it'll sense how much energy your battery up front has and needs. And if it's topped off, it'll just trickle a couple amps to maintain it. But if it's low, it'll send 10 amps or whatever it needs to charge it up. So it'll always keep your battery charged as long as you're plugged in. Of course, when you're pulling down the road, your tow vehicle's alternator will send power through your charging line and keep your battery charged up that way also. So, okay? Alrighty. Your keys are hanging here on your sink. <coughs> Excuse me. This device here, let me get a little bit more light here. This device here is your carbon monoxide and LP gas detector. It should always be green. If it's not get it service. So if it goes off, it's detected carbon monoxide buildup or LP gas. So you you take everybody outside, you leave the door open, you shut the gas off at the front, figure out what's going on. Alright. Also, if it beeps very slowly, the same tone but very slowly, it's telling you your battery's low. So it's a carbon monoxide detector, LP detector, and a low battery alarm. I'm gonna put it through the test cycle just so you can hear it. LP is good, carbon monoxide coming up. Good, and then of course the low battery alarm. And then back to green. It should always be green, if not get it serviced. Okay, so we have theater seats here. Now uh, you can drop this tabletop down onto these cleats here, and then use the back cushion to fill in the space and turn this into a bed. Okay. Um, let's see what else we have. Well, this, this, the thermostat is, sell, is pretty, like, like it's typical of thermostat. You hit the mode button, it lights up. Then you just keep poking it to go through the options. You go through fan. Fan is just the air conditioner running without the compressor. It just circulates air. And then you get to cool, which is full air conditioning. It'll give you the option of high, low, or auto. Always choose auto with the air conditioner. That's the best way to go. Hit it again, and it'll say it'll be heat, which is your propane furnace. And then again, hit it again, and that's off. So, okay. All right, so let's see if we got some light here. Here we go. First of all, this GFCI, all the, all the plugs in the trailer, all the receptacles in the trailer are wired through this GFCI, even the one on the outside. So if you're using something outside that pops, you're going to reset it here, okay? Um, sink works like any other sink. Shower works like any other shower. Always keep the door. It has a magnetic strip on it, but always keep it latched when you're traveling because they will sometimes break if they slam slam back and forth real, real hard, okay? So always keep it latched. You've got storage here above your outside kitchen. Uh, a vent with a fan. And, of course, your RV toilet has a flush pedal right here. It's got antifreeze in it right now. Directly below there, this is the black tank. So when you get to the campground, your black tank will be empty, right? Because you've already flushed it um, and dumped it. So when you get to the campground, you hook up your power and your water. Then you'll come in here. You'll put one dose of chemical in the bowl. Then you'll step on the flush pedal. And when you step on it, water will come swirling out. And you stand on it long enough to put at least a gallon of water in there along with the... Uh, the uh, chemical right you can use more water but don't use less um, and then you're all, at that point after a gallon of water and the chemical you're ready to you're ready to to it's use it it's set till till the next time you dump it right so um, the main thing is you can't use it dry dry meaning no water or chemical in it because if you do the smell will be terrible plus you can get clogged up so um, you always want to have water and chemical in it Let's say you're going to stay at the campground for another week, but you had to dump your black tank. 
after you dump the black tank, you come in here and repeat that procedure. Chemical and water, and then you're all set, okay? Okay, so let's move back this way. And um, the bedroom has a, you know, has a, so a place for shoes or, or dog bowls or whatever you have. And uh, you can also lift this up and there's some storage underneath. You have TV hookup here, um, right here, and you have a backer plate if you want to, if you want to mount a, a bracket. Get the one that swings swings this way, right? So you can see it from laying down when you're laying down. Always try to spend the extra money if you can and get the one that locks in place when it's closed. That way, that way you don't have to hang a strap on it. Okay. Uh, and this, of course, is your escape window. It goes like this. You push it all the way through, and it would go all the way through. And then you grab a hold of the red tab and pull the screen out, and you can escape that way during an emergency, okay? All right. Okay, so I think that does it. So, I want to thank you for purchasing your trailer here at National RV Detroit. Please remember what I said about inspecting your roof every 60 days. That's important. It should be part of your regular maintenance schedule. Um, and right now, this, this, there's, this trailer's winterized, so there's, the water's been purged from the system and replaced with antifreeze. Um, the water heater is bypassed and empty right now, so you're all set till the summer. Once you start getting ready to camp, make sure you, you turn on the hot water with your city water hooked up and make sure your black, or your, excuse me, your, your water heater tank fills up before you turn it on, okay? Thank you.